Hi. So a lot of you guys probably saw the uh, email that came out in regards to SJRA and approval of reducing the lake level. So I thought I'd put together a quick presentation to kind of show what that might mean for us um, and look at a little bit of historical data as far as you know, how the lake has uh, been from a level standpoint. So I contacted SJRA to get the full details on what the plan is. And basically there's going to be two big reductions that are going to occur. So the first one is going to be a spring reduction. So between April 1st and May 31st, they're going to drop the full pool to 200 MSL. Um, June 1st through August 1st, they're going to allow the lake to start refilling back to full pool. And then beginning in August, they're going to start reducing again for a late summer, early fall drawdown. Um, so between August 1st and August 15th, they're going to slowly reduce the lake down to 200 MSL. And then beginning in August 15th, with a target of into August, they're going to reduce the lake to 199 MSL. Then beginning October 1st, they'll begin to recapture flow and uh, allow the lake to refill. So if we take a look at what is that actually going to mean. So if you look at the spring period, we typically enter the spring with, you know, very close to, if not above, full pool in the lake. And we usually experience somewhere around half of an inch at most of evaporation in the spring. Um, so when you look at the last four years, you know, that, kind, that trend kind of holds over this, those four years. And, and, you know, based on the fact that we'll probably see an extra foot of drop in that period, I think we'll be somewhere around 199.5 MSL during the spring drawdown. So if you look at the summer drawdown, so this one seems to be the most inconsequential of the drawdowns, in, at least in the early summer part. So, you know, we typically enter uh, early August with the lake down anywhere from, you know, three quarters to uh, um, a quarter of a foot. So we've already lost a little bit in our typical year from evaporation. And we typically do see uh, some additional evaporation through August 15th, and we're hovering somewhere just above 200. So I, I don't think the August 1st through August 15th uh, drawdown will be significantly impactful. Um, we'll probably see somewhere around six inches of a reduction in the lake level, um, but it won't be as significant as the others. Now, once we enter the August 16th through October 1st period, they're gonna begin to draw down the lake to 199 MSL. So we typically enter that period uh, already down a little bit, um, and we usually see somewhere, you know, in the in the inch and a half to a half inch of evaporation uh, occur in that period. So based on looking at the last three years, um, I, I think we'll probably need to plan for somewhere around a 198 and a half MSL during this August 16th to October 1st uh, time period. Now these are, you know, this, this will be based on looking at just uh, the last three years and, and what we've seen there. Of course, any degree of drought or anything will significantly reduce that anymore. So the big question is October 1st to when, right? So if we enter October 1st and we're at, you know, 198 and a half, how long is it before we actually get significant water back in the lake? Well, looking at our last three years of historical data, uh, 2015 is probably the, the closest to what we'll see. In 2015, uh, we got down to 199 in October. Um, but as you can see, we didn't get back to 200 until, you know, mid to late November, and we didn't get full pull until December 13th. Um, if we look at 2016 and 2017, we got down to around 200, and then we didn't get full pull back to, you know, sometime around Christmas time. So what we're likely looking at is uh, October in the 199s, uh, November in the 200s and not getting back to full pool till two, uh, to December. So if we kind of break that down on a month by month basis, you know, we're looking at January, February, and March really not uh, being any different than it's been in past years. Uh, we're looking at April, May, and June uh, probably being down around 199.5, uh, July somewhere around normal level, and then our, our most concerning months will be August. Now, a lot of you have asked uh, how I'm kind of getting this data about the canal system and so forth. So I thought I'd put together uh, a little presentation to show you guys what uh, what I'm using. So this software is called ReefMaster. And basically what I do is uh, I use the, the sonar equipment in my boat uh, to go up and down the canals and record the depths uh, into a log file. And then I take that log file and I import it into here. And over you know multiple consecutive passes in different locations, um, the software can actually read that data 
and build a, a pretty accurate map of our canal system. So you can see here, here's you know, the full pool state of the internal Grand, uh, Grand Harbor Canal system. Um, so you can look at the legend down here at the right, and you know, we've got uh, a blue is essentially deep water. Um, we've got dark green is six plus feet, light green, five plus feet, yellow, four plus, orange, three plus, red, two plus, and purple being less than two feet. So if you look at the, the Grand Harbor Canal system here, you know, we've got, uh, you know, various mix of depths and so forth. But most of our canal system in Grand Harbor uh, has access to five plus feet of water today. So what's going to happen if we start looking at some of these lake lowering dates? So let's look at the spring period where we bring this down a foot and a half. And we take a look at this map. All right, so if we take a look at the spring period, um, now we start into getting into some sections of red here. Um, so if you look at what these depths realistically mean from a boat owner standpoint, right? So uh, if you own an outboard powered boat, uh, you know, a pontoon or a fishing boat that's got an outboard, you can get through red fairly easily. Um, if you own a, you know, a wakeboard boat or a big boat with a stern drive or something like that, it, it could be a challenge to get through red. So you can see we even have some spots here down in Serene Water, down off of Grand View, down here uh, off of Harbor Side, and so forth, that even an outboard powered boat won't be able to get through in the spring. So if you, you know, you look in here, we have significantly more areas that your larger wakeboard boats that, that would have inboards wouldn't be able to get through in the spring. So let's go ahead and take a look at, you know, what, what does it look like in the summer period? So if we take it down two and a half feet, now we have a whole different story, right? So we've got all this red up in the front of the, the neighborhood that's gonna block any larger, you know, wakeboard boat, bigger stern driver, so forth. We've got some orange here in the middle, but these guys will still be blocked by this exit path here. Um, and then we've got a lot of purple, right? And keep in mind, purple is gonna block just about every boat. Because uh, that's going to be, you know, two two or less foot of water, um, and, you know. So you're you're talking most of the Serene Water Canal over here past the bridge by Grand View, uh, a lot a lot of the stuff down Harbor Side. All this Harbor Side stuff is going to be blocked here by this passage. Um, so it's you know going to cause us some significant loss of ability to get out of the the neighborhood during that period. So let's take a look at some of the canals on the other side. So uh, here's the Peel Road Canal. As you can see, you know, pretty good water uh, at full pool. There's a little, there is a shallow spot right here around this point, but it looks like you can go around it. Um, but if we take a look at what that looks like in the spring, right, um, kind of dicey in some spots there, right? So some of your outboard power boats will be able to get out, um, but your uh, your bigger wakeboard stern drives may have some challenges. So if we take it down another foot, like it's going to be in the uh, in the late summer drawdown, right now you really have some challenges on this Peel Road Canal. You know, uh, I think that uh, there, you, you know, some of your really shallow draft boats may be able to get through here, but any of your larger boats going to have some challenges. So let's look at uh, the Grand Harbor Point Canal system here. So let's take it down a foot and a half, right? This is actually still pretty good, right? So, I mean, you've still got plenty of water for uh, even your large boats to get through here uh, in the spring. And if we take a look at the summertime, what that's gonna look like. Um, I, you know, there is some shallow areas here as you get further out into the lake, but uh, I, I think that you could probably navigate around some of this and even get out larger boats on this Grand Harbor Point Canal. So let's look at cool breeze. So if we take cool breeze down for the uh, in the spring, so cool breeze still looks you know pretty good, right? Uh, so you you have a few pockets of orange here, but no red, no purple. Uh, so I think in the springtime you'll you'll be able to get out fairly easily in cool breeze. So if we take it down and look at it for the summer. So even in the summertime, I think a cool breeze will likely still be okay. There are some pockets here with some little shallow spots, but 
for the most part, you should be able to get through there. Um, so one thing to keep in mind here is, is that, you know, a lot of this data is, uh, is for the center of the canal. I can't drive inside of each individual person's boat lift to see how much uh, water is in there. Um, and in addition, you know, depending on how your boat lift is set up, you may need 10, 12, 14 additional inches underneath your boat to get out if you have a V-hull boat uh, for the lift supports and so forth. So um, you're probably going to need to dredge your boat dock, even if it looks like you can get passage based on the, the map data here. Um, but, uh, you know, assuming you can get out, uh, this is actually some good information so that you know exactly where we can do. Um, if you guys have any questions, don't feel, uh, I mean, feel free to email me um, and uh, I can give you some additional info on your, your spot if you need. Thank you very much.